Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I'm also thankful for the opportunity to follow up on a question I raised in the House of Commons on September 29th. Like all of us in this place, I value the time that I get to spend on the ground with my constituents. It is only outside of the Ottawa bubble and with the workers of this great country that we as parliamentarians can truly appreciate the challenges Canadians are facing and the sacrifices that they're making, especially at this time, to keep our economy afloat. I saw this on a full display this summer and fall as I traveled my riding of Yorkton Malville. At harvest time, farmers and producers are at work from well before the sunrise and well into the night. They do what it takes to get the job done. They form the backbone of our economy. Their success is Canada's success, and in turn, setbacks that they face create a ripple effect across our country and indeed across the globe. Speaker, we live in Canada. I come from Saskatchewan. And as all of my constituents know, especially the farmers and the ranchers that I represent, winter comes upon us quickly and it lasts a long time. Farmers and producers therefore meticulously plan out their year to account for the unpredictability of weather, supply chains and yields, but often there are matters outside of their control. Right now they are facing a critical shortage of feed for their breeding herds after a year of drought. Precipitation remains well below normal throughout the summer, particularly in western Saskatchewan. As a result, moisture deficits have taken a critical toll on pastures and forage rangers. Livestock producers face tough choices. Some may even have to sell a portion of their herd to sustain the remainder through the winter. But this is not an option for all producers. If they do not have the means or the source to feed their animals in the short term, herds will suffer. Canadians will face food shortages and higher prices, and ranching families could face business failures. For months now, the Saskatchewan Cattlemen's Association has been just one group sounding the alarm, asking the federal and provincial governments to step up with their share of ag recovery relief to help livestock producers navigate the extraordinary burden they take on when natural disasters occur. The government of Saskatchewan can be praised for its concern and fast action to protect Canada's food security and the livelihood of our ranching communities. Two months ago, it committed its $70 million, or $80 per head, to sustain breeding stocks. However, the silence from this government has been deafening. It has yet to commit its share of ag recovery funding. My constituents are rightly raising some difficult sweat questions. Is Ottawa ignoring them? Do they want them to fail? Have they forgotten about them? Or, by some calculation, determined that there's no need for assistance? As their voice in this place, let me be very clear, there's an urgent need here and time is running out. I'm asking again today for the Government of Canada to immediately make available their share of ag recovery funding, $120 per head, that will sustain precious breeding herds into the winter. It must do its part to ensure that families from coast to coast have continued access to the high quality food Saskatchewan livestock producers provide. It's my understanding that the federal government and the province of Saskatchewan have been in consultation and we're working on a review to determine how agri-recovery could best assist livestock industry. Well, I must say respectfully, Saskatchewan has stepped up. The time for consultation is long over. This government has pointed farmers and ranchers to the support available through this program as the answer in the past and yet have not acted now. My constituents go beyond and above to feed our country and deserve the courtesy of a straight answer. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to recognize the Parliamentary Secretary and the member for Glengarry Prescott-Russell. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Given this is the first time I have the opportunity to have a discussion through you, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to congratulate you on your position, and I'd like to say that you have my full respect and, and my duty as a member is to have trust in you. Thank my colleague from uh, Yorkton, Melville, for this opportunity to talk about our support for producers in Saskatchewan who are impacted by severe drought conditions. Our hearts go out to producers in, during this extremely challenging time. With winter coming, cattle producers are facing difficult decisions about their herds and many producers have suffered lower grain yields because of droughts. We're talking about the cumulative damage of multiple years of droughts on pastures and forage production, leading to low feed supplies for livestock producers. To address the members' questions, 
the federal government is working as quickly as possible with the Saskatchewan government on agri recovery, and we have we will have more to say on this very soon. Agri recovery allows federal, provincial, territorial government to work together when natural disasters like this occur. So just to, to allow the producers to understand, this is not a federal or provincial only decision. Both the province and the federal assessors get together and they make the assessment based on the agri recovery, recovery framework that they've both signed on a five-year agreement to say yes, this is a natural disaster or this is a drought that uh, has impacted our producers and they work with this within that framework. We have a lot of experience, unfortunately, with the BC floods, with uh, the F Fiona hurricane, hurricane, hur well, pardon, l'ouragan uh, Fiona, pardon my French, mais, uh, hurricane Fiona. Unfortunately, both provincial assessors and federal assessors have too much experience because of climate change disasters. Producers can help write down this income by claiming the cost of buying new breeding animals for the following year. This will reduce the tax burden from the original sale. Again, the goal is to help producers who are facing difficult herd management decisions. Saskatchewan producers also have access to a all of our business, business manage, management risk programs. Business risk management programs are the first line of defense for producers facing disasters like this one. Our government has already supported Saskatchewan's request for an increase to the interim payment rate of agri-stability from 50 to 75 percent. As well, we have increased the compensation rate from agri-stability from 70 to 80 percent, starting with the 2023 program year. That means more support in line of need. And we also partnered with the province on a one-year adjustment to the agri-insurance program to make more drought-damaged crops available for feed. The vast majority of Saskatchewan producers enrolled in forage insurance have received payments, and 60% of their premiums are covered by the federal government. My message, Mr. Speaker, is that our government is here for Saskatchewan farmers. They deserve, and they have, our unwavering support. Mr. Speaker, I've been to Saskatchewan. The minister has been to Saskatchewan. We will always have the back of our farmers, our cattle producers, and we know they're going through a rough time. We will have good news fairly shortly, and I know the member's advocating for her constituent, and I respect that, and we will have good news to say to our members very shortly. Thank you. For one minute, the Honourable Member from Yorkton Mill Melville. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I appreciate the kind words, but they aren't enough. They are desperate right now. The province of Saskatchewan has come forward, so there must be some kind of an agreement in place, and this money is cash flow that they need to be able to move forward. We are in October. We are talking about desperate need for food for their breeding cattle. The time for federal assistance has long passed. I'm tired of hearing, it's coming soon, it's coming soon, it's coming soon. It's not coming soon. Saskatchewan's cattlemen and livestock producers need a federal government that is there for them during these hard times. And yes, this is one of those hard times. They're not new to droughts, but this is very desperate. I know the minister is an experienced member of cabinet. He's served in this role before. I know he's aware of the essential role that cattle and all livestock play in the health of our grasslands, the health of our environment, food security, and Canada's trade with the world. Producing families rely on providing excellent food to the world, and our economy relies on their success. The cost of food has already crippled the ability of countless families to make their ends meet. We need this government to step up now. One minute, the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Agriculture and Agri-Food. And I appreciate my Honourable colleagues' comments. Obviously, with agri-recovery, this is not a province or federal decision. This is a decision made by the federal and both the province, as we have done with BC, as we have done with PEI, as we have done with Nova Scotia. The timeline will be the same, and we will respect both timelines. And I know when folks are facing a crisis, it can never be quick enough. But I assure my honourable colleague, the minister and our government have the hearts of cattlemen and livestock producers in Saskatchewan, and we will have a timely response in due form. Thank you so much.